hello people in this video we want to look at face presentation right so basically you can see here the presenting part is the face of the baby right of the fetus so basically it is a cephalic presentation what is there down it is the uh, head right the cephalic presentation is there the presenting part is what the presenting part is the face so it is a cephalic presentation where the presenting part is face this is the cephalic presentation okay here what happens you can see there is extension of the spine and there is complete extension of the head so what is there here complete extension of the head so that is why the face is coming forward just make your head go back and you know try to touch the uh, head to your back like this like how this baby is doing can you make your head go back and touch the back oh yeah that is a um, complete extension of the head okay so occiput is in contact with the back so this is the position uh, for for which you uh, you will get face presentation the denominator here is the mentum so uh, the bony prominence is what here it is the mentum mentum is your chin right so this is what is your uh, uh, this is what is the denominator denominator is what here it is the mentum so did you understand basics of face presentation very good so now let us go to the next slide so when you uh, see vaginal examination when you do something that like this is what you should see right so this is the vaginal touch picture showing landmarks in mento anterior position this is mento anterior so let us say this is the lady here and this is the vagina so this is the mentum mentum is anterior right mentum anterior actually it is left side left mento anterior this is isn't it now <clears throat> so when you do vaginal examination guys what if you basically Uh, normally what will happen in breech position the finger will go into the anus right when you if you try to see but here uh, if you if uh, uh, you can see that the malar eminences and the mouth they are not in the same line it's more like a triangle is it so uh, what happens in breech how will it be you will have the buttocks and here you will have the anus they kind of in a uh, the the anus and the ischial tuberosities are in one line but in face presentation it is not in the same line the malar eminences and mouth so in case you uh, just try to palpate right you will feel the sucking uh, effect of the mouth and you can feel the hard alveolar margins right because of the teeth um, the jaw absence of meconium staining on the examination finger when you uh, examine um, when you remove the finger you will not have meconium staining because this is not the anus it's the mouth are you getting it guys so basically don't go poking the eyes or something but this is just a distinguishing feature they are seeing okay then how is it going guys what are we looking at face presentation okay so why is this face presentation slightly different you know because unlike your occiput and all that see um, the face is an irregular structure right your not like your occiput right see which is more smooth this is very smooth isn't it but the face is very irregular right so that is something you should know there is chance of cord cord prolapse in this uh, face presentation there can be delay of labor okay just look at all the reasons that they have written here then there can be perineal damage okay remember this there can be perineal damage important so basically uh, important is uh, uh, perineal damage is more postpartum hemorrhage is more due to atonic uterus so this is something that is not contracting kind of thing isn't it so atonic uterus uh, postpartum hemorrhage is more if it is a uh, atonic uterus okay so face presentation is a mal presentation isn't it okay so now let us look at this prognosis how will it be <clears throat> look at this photo guys uh, before we go further so here what happens this is the left and this is the right of the lady right lady is here and um, so here you have the mentum so here this is they are saying this is left mento anterior mentum is anterior here you can see mentum is posterior isn't it so mentum posterior they don't like so much they are saying mentum anterior still you can manage okay so in mentum anterior what happens this mentum can come okay this mentum can go see rotate like this and it can come behind this pubic symphysis okay so just say, see uh, what they are saying here in in this situation mento anterior the maternal risk is not much but she'll have increased morbidity but in mento posterior especially the neglected cases there can be obstructed labor and ruptured uterus okay so did you understand obstructed labor and ruptured uterus can be that fetal prognosis how will the baby be you know like this so if you see if you see any baby like this now you can say was it a face presentation because uh, here you can see eyelids and all swollen lips swollen and the head is elongated kind of a thing okay so for fetus what are the prognosis there could be cord prolapse there could be increased um, operative delivery cere cerebral congestion infection also can be there okay 
then what else there could be caput and molding okay so caput um, uh, forms distorting the entire face the eyelids will be swollen lips will be swollen molding basically there is uh, there is no compression of the facial bones right but there is elongation of the occipito frontal diameter occipito frontal diameter something like this is it the extended head you know all this anyways after some days they will subside their telling how is it going people what are we looking at face presentation so in face presentation what did you see you saw what the prognosis is how the mother how will it affect the mother how will it affect the fetus and all that you have seen right so now let us look at some more details so incidence uh, this face presentation is one in 500 births it happens uh, especially uh, when will you notice this face presentation you know after the onset of labor only you will usually notice it okay and in multi paris women it is more common so why does it happen maternal causes you can say multiparity with pendulous abdomen there is a lateral obliquity of the uterus so the uterus itself the, the positioning is like that there could be contracted pelvis flat pelvis pelvic tumors also can be there which will make the baby present its face out wow okay then uh, fetal uh, causes guys congenital mal uh, malformation especially know this anencephaly so there will be no neck almost non existent neck with an absence of cranium so what will happen there will be this uh, extension of this head right the congenital goiter can happen so there is a big swelling here right thyroid so maybe that is why or what the neck uh, the uh, neck is extended or what you can see the head head is extended dolicocephalic head that's a long skull if some uh, babies have congenital bronchocele the bronchus is filled with mucus so if your bronchus is filled with mu mucus will you feel like extending your head twist of the cord several times around the neck so again something around the neck and it is extending the neck increased tone of the extensor group of muscles so the muscles itself of the neck having increased tonicity which muscles the extensor group okay so you understood the causes so finally basically what is happening you can see here whatever the maternal and uh, fetal causes are finally what is happening is the head is the neck is extended right can you say the head is extended neck is extended okay then now where are we guys we are here in the etiology we finished okay then let us look at the management how will you manage these people so basically you'll have to assess all this you'll have to assess whether there's adequacy of the pelvis size of the baby uh, is there any associated complicating factors etc is there any fetal malformation like we already told you anencephaly and all can be there position of the mentum you should know whether it's anterior or posterior if it's anterior it's still fine right for the mother some morbidities but it is still fine okay guys so how's it going what will you see in diagnosis you already saw in vaginal examination that uh, how that image looks right so basically you will see this usually in labor right um, at the time of delivery you can see this uh, so in inspection what will you get basically there is no bulging of the flanks because of the s shaped spine there is no bulging of the flanks so what will you find in palpation basically you will see same thing as occiput posterior position let us try to understand this so if this is the lateral grip you are doing what will you see lateral grip you will see the you will feel the limbs the back is on the flank so you will not get the um, uh, back to palpate the chest is drawn anteriorly against the uterine wall so you will always mistake the chest for the back they are seeing then this is mento anterior they are saying okay you can see here the mentum is anterior guys focus are you able to see or it's becoming too much take a break what are we looking at palpation in what face presentation very good in that you have only two things mento anterior mento posterior that's what they are concerned so what will you feel they are saying here in this is mento posterior here you can see the mentum is posterior here the mentum is anterior okay so based what will you feel in this one guys uh, mento posterior back is felt to the front better palpated only towards the podiac pole because of extension of spine let's take a look at this back is felt to the front yeah i kind of feel that back is felt to the front and better palpated only towards the podiac pole because of extension of spine okay what is this podiac podalic pole podalic is something to do with the feet okay so towards the feet you can feel the back is it 
pelvic grip look at the pelvic grip what will you find you will find that the head seems big and is not engaged okay just look at the details here then auscultation fetal heart sound is distinctly audible anteriorly through the chest wall okay here in mento posterior guys focus fsh is not distinct and is audible on the flank towards the side of the limbs that's very technical information isn't it okay what will you see in ultrasound and etc you will just see if there is any uh, bony malformation of the baby that and all you should know size of baby etc okay so let's just go one step further and look at the face presentation there are positions you should know basically anterior posterior you already know uh, so basically you can have anterior or posterior in anterior what can you have you can have left anterior or right anterior in posterior you can have uh, right posterior or left posterior so you just have four positions to remember basically you remember what is most common okay most common is this one whatever we have highlighted that is rop will become lma so lma is most common so lma means that baby's face was like this right face is here eyes is here smile is here so the mentum is where mentum is anterior and which side left side so this you are looking from down okay uh, so this is mentum is left mentum anterior is the most common okay so why does that happen because of rop being the most common posterior position so rop will become lma did that make any sense at all let's look at one more diagram here see this one what you see here is a uh, right occiput posterior right this is right occiput posterior so this is right side this is left side this is the occiput and it is at the back okay it is not in the front so this is right occiput posterior now this right occiput posterior what happens this baby this is in uh, head is flexed now what it will do the head will go completely back let us say that time the head come goes completely back the face presentation comes so you will get left mento anterior right so posterior became anterior right became left and what happens this is face presentation Th did this make any sense at all so when you have the doll and you will check you will know this is right occipito posterior the head what will happen it will go into complete extension like this right and what will happen the face will come so this will become rop will get converted into lma left mento anterior so that's what they have written in this see here rop becomes left mento anterior and this is the most common position okay so this is left mento anterior where still it can turn and the mentum can come behind the pubic symphysis etc this is mento posterior okay they don't like mento posterior so much so in face presentation what happens you have to know um, mostly you can know this one this is submentum mentum behind that submento brigma this is brigma right where the anterior fontanelle is there so submento brigmatic diameter they are talking about guys so we are just looking at slightly more technical details isn't it so look at this um, so let us look at uh, mechanism of labor for mento anterior so for mento anterior the engaging diameter of the head is the submento brigmatic which you just now saw submento brigmatic diameter which is 9.5 in a fully extended head right or it can be submento vertical that becomes little bad submento vertical that becomes a little bad okay because that is 11.5 cm okay if it is partially extended that will become the uh, uh submento vertical you will have to uh, know as a diameter otherwise if it is fully extended it will be submento brigmatic to confuse you there are so many diameters we are talking about the submento this is the mento looks like this is the submento submento brigma is this one right and submento vertical is this one 6 6 is submento vertical that's 11.5 and then here you have the submento brigmatic that is 9.5 okay they will ask you which and all are 9.5 so you should know this one sub occipito brigmatic is 9.5 submento brigmatic is 9.5 and uh, the biparietal is also 9.5 okay sub occipito <coughs> brigmatic this is also 9.5 okay so here you should remember it is 9.5 so it is still fine kind of a thing in mento anterior okay so basically there will be uh, internal rotation of the chin we already told you in this it will internally rotate through 1/8 of the circle right so circle uh, this is the circle if the circle you divide into eight parts this is the circle 
divide it into eight parts very good so the chin rotates through one eighth of the circle anteriorly and the mentum will come behind the pubic symphysis right so but this looks more than one one eighth but anyways one eighth if it turns it will come behind the pubic symphysis okay further descent occurs till submentum hinges under the pubic arc now what will happen here uh, how will it be delivered first chin will come right first the chin that is what is our di di denominator right then the bro the face the bro the vertex and lastly the occiput will come okay where is the vertex this is the vertex yeah let's see that again guys what comes out see here chin then this part of the face then the eyebrows see we a chin face bro then the vertex then the occiput kind of makes sense right that's how the baby is getting delivered the head is getting delivered extra details you have to read okay <clears throat> so in minto anterior what will you do how will you manage they are saying first stage you can wait and watch so that you know this will turn and all that and um, what else you will do guys second stage again they are waiting for spontaneous delivery to occur look at the details here okay in uh, this uh, um uh, face presentation you should not do vacuum you should not do vacuum delivery guys so mento anterior just remember okay mento anterior what did you learn just learn if it's completely flexed sorry extended the head you have to remember only some diameters what are the diameter submento bregmatic diameter you remember that is nothing but 9.5 okay so this much you remember remember it as completely flexed only you will get this diameter submento bregmatic yeah that is the diameter okay so mento anterior so we looked at mento anterior how to manage the labor then coming to mento posterior mento posterior they don't like i told you right they don't like it so everything in red here there is no possibility of spontaneous delivery in persistent mento posterior they are uh, what are they doing here only in some cases there is some rotation it seems otherwise it will not rotate or incomplete rotation will happen there is no possibility of spontaneous delivery delivery becomes obstructed so here you can see that this baby mentum is posterior mentum is posterior mentum is posterior this is anterior mentum is posterior they don't like this it's all red 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 and what are they saying here some technical details are there they are talking about some sternal diameter now they are talking about what sternal diameter see bregma sternal diameter some 18 cm wow so labor becomes inevitably obstructed they are saying okay they don't like mento posterior they don't like okay so you understood right now how will you manage this you can try uh, but you have to be strict vigilance hope that there is some anterior rotation then uh, the second stage if it is you will they will they are talking if it is rotating then you can do spontaneous or forceps delivery with episiotomy then c section they are talking about uh, man, then co commonly now they do c section for this and uh, manual rotation of the chin anteriorly which they don't do nowadays okay there was one more thing manual rotation of chin and all nowadays they don't do looks like cesarean they will do if there is a contracted pelvis big baby associated complicating factors and if it is basically a posterior right and then guys that's it about face presentation you have looked at uh, face presentation in this video bye bye